Hello, I'm Farzan Direction. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the Association for Symbolic Logic and particularly organizers of the special session on proof theory uh, for the opportunity to present my work here. Uh, I present a part of the work I've, that I've done toward my PhD thesis. Uh, I'm going to talk about infinitary proof theory of first order linear logic with fixed points. Uh, so let's just start with a very well known uh, induction principle, and it's dual, the co induction principle, which the best known instance of it is by simulation. In the context of programming languages, we use induction to prove properties like termination or progress of a program and co-induction to prove productivity or equality of streams. We can generalize this observation and say that induction is being used to prove properties that will eventually hold and co-induction to prove properties that hold infinitely often. The object of interest in an inductive argument are finite data types like natural numbers and lists, while in co-induction we are interested in infinite data types like streams or infinite trees. To be more accurate, we need least fixed points to apply induction on and greatest fixed point to apply co-induction on. Um, so the main question that we pursue in this talk is that what if we want to work with data types defined as mutual least and greatest fixed points? Are there any good examples of these data types? Well, the short answer is yes. An interesting class of examples are the programs that work on mutual least and greatest fixed points. And um, then which principle shall we use to prove properties about these programs? Um, the first guess, which is actually correct, is to apply induction and co-induction simultaneously, but uh, we need to be more cautious with mixing these principles. And finally, if with induction we can prove termination and with co-induction we can prove productivity, what property can we prove with the simultaneous induction and co-induction? Uh, we want to analyze the answer of these questions, but first let's review some previous works. Well, we are all familiar with induction principle and by simulation, and um, Kozan and Silva presented a co-induction principle in their 2017 paper. Now you can find a pointer to it in the references. Uh, we also adopted um, a couple of their examples in this talk and in our um, paper. In his 2005 paper, Brotherson introduced the first order calculus that allows for circularity. Uh, the circular edges in his work are representing inductive steps and he introduced a validity condition to ensure that these inductive steps are good. In this talk, we follow his approach, but we want to enrich our system with co-inductive cycles as well. Uh, there are some other proof theoretic approaches to mix induction and co-induction, for example, the finitary calculus introduced by Balda and size size by Abel. Uh, so far, we have established that our goal is to introduce a first order calculus for linear logic and reach with least and greatest fixed points. Following the approach of Brotherson, we allow circularities in our system and our circular edges correspond to co-inductive and inductive uh, steps. And of course, we need a validity condition to make sure that these steps are good. Uh, I'm not going to explain our validity condition in detail. If you're interested, you can take a look at our archive papers, but I want to point out that uh, for our validity condition, we need to assign priorities um, to least and greatest fixed points in our system. Um, you can understand these priorities as the order in which you solve a set of least and greatest fixed point equations. And also for more information on this, you can take a look at Fortier and Santo Canola's um, paper. Um, that's, um, I will point you to that in the references too. Um, now let's take a look at an example. Uh, we have the natural numbers as the least fixed point of zero of type one or successor of type natural numbers. And the list of natural numbers is a least fixed point of an empty list, uh, which we call the nil, or a cons of a natural number with a list uh, continuation. Uh, mu in the subscripts of these definitions stands for least fixed point. And the one in the superscript uh, is the priority assigned to these types. Um, of course, since we don't have any greatest fixed points in this signature, um, the priorities are not important. Now let's look at a programming example. 
most of the programs in this talk are written in the context of session type processes. I will give you the high level information of them, but if you want to familiarize yourselves better with their syntax, you can take a look look at uh, Frank's uh, lecture notes that uh, again I put um, a pointer of that um, in the references. Um, so here is the code for append. It receives two lists L1 and L2 as it resources and append them in a new list L. Uh, the way it does it is to first case on the list L1, um, this case L1 here, uh, and unfold the definition of the list using this new list, and then it will look inside the structure of the list. If it is an empty list or nil, all we need to do is to forward L2 to L. If it is a cons uh, of some element X and some uh, continuation L1 prime, we send X to L and call, call append recursively on L1 prime and L2. I think we all agree that this program is terminating, um, now we want to prove that this is actually the case. We define a predicate terminate, um, on, and we define it exactly on like this program append. Um, and we, we actually use pattern matching to define it here, but uh, you can take a look at its extended definition in our archive paper. Uh, so if the first argument of the append, uh, of append is null, uh, then it means that we know that the program terminates, so we, we just put it uh, equal to type one. If the first argument is cons of x and some L1 prime, it will uh, terminate only if append terminates on L1 prime. Um, so as you see, um, termination of append, for termination of append, we only need to have um, information of the first argument. That is why I put uh, these underscores for the other arguments, because they're, ne they're not needed in uh, the termination. Um, okay, so similarly, uh, I define predicate list um, where if um, a list is equal to nil, then we know that it is um, a list, so it's just one. And if it is cons of some element and L1 prime, we only need to know that L1 prime is actually a list. Okay. Um, So as you may have noticed, we write these uh, first order predicates with a very similar style to the definition of lists and natural numbers uh, a couple of slides um, before. Uh, mu again stands for least fixed points and superscript one is their priorities. However, here I want to emphasize on the subtle difference between them. We write our session type programs based on the propositional types and in a metacircular way, we prove properties about these programs using an extension of the same language to the first order types. Okay, so now we want to prove this judgment up here, saying that if L is a list, then we can pass it to append as the first argument and be sure that it terminates. Okay, so here's the proof. And, um, this is actually a derivation, and you can see that this is um, a recursive call here. So judgment dagger calls itself. And we know that this derivation is a proof because this mu left uh, occurs here in the circular, in this, in this circle. Um, So the validity of this recursive call is ensured by the mu left rule that breaks down the definition of a list here. Okay, good. Now let's take a look at another program performing on greatest fixed points. Uh, we have three productive operators, merge, split one, and split two. Um, merge simply convert two streams into one by alternatively outputting an element of each. A split one return the odd elements of a stream, and a split two return the even elements. We want to show that these operations are inverses, meaning that if a split, um, if we split, so let's say that this is a stream T, we split T with a split one and a split two into two streams, and then we merge them together again, um, and we build T. So we want to show that this is actually the case. Um, to do that, we first define three properties for these operations. 
Merge XYZ says that Z is the result of merging X and Y. It is defined as the greatest fixed point. Head uh, or first element of uh, Z is head of X and tail of Z is merge of Y and tail of X. Um, a split one and a split two are defined mutually again as greatest fixed points. Um, so that is what new stands for. And a split one XY means head of Y is head of X and tail of Y is the result of a split two and tail of X. Um, where split two simply means I skip the first element of X and call a split one on the rest. Okay. So here is the circular proof that shows operations merge and split J are inverses. Uh, the circular edge here corresponds to a co-inductive step. And it is valid because of the very first rule, new right, which ensures that in each cycle we can prove something about head of the resulting stream. Um, okay, so as for the next example, we can look at a more interesting one, which is run xt. This is a stream producer where x is a list of operations and t is the output stream. If x is, in, uh, is empty, it just terminates. If um, the, set of, uh, the list of operations is a skip and then x, it just skips the command and um, run the rest of commands. If the list of uh, our commands are put x, y, uh, it will go to a new state, which is defined uh, as a greatest fixed points productively and um, we call it n run x, y, t. Uh, it first puts the head of t to be element O, and then run commands um, x and y um, sequentially. So you can see that the list of commands grow here, but at least we produce something, the head of t. And the priorities are important here because the list and greatest fixed points are mixed together. Okay, so we want to uh, prove two judgments simultaneously. These are the judgments that we want to prove. Um, the dagger judgment says that ROM produces a list of O's, and the star judgment states that N run produces a stream of O's. And the definition of list and a stream of, a stream of O's are defined up here um, mutually. So they're um, similar to what we've seen for a list and a stream, except that they are now mutually defined. So um, here note that all news have less priority than news. So if news has um, have priority two and news have priority one, and we read it as a news have less priorities um, than news. Okay, so let's take a look at the proofs of these judgments. Uh, okay, and in particular, take a look at this path. So we start from here, and then we go up there. So we first unfold the definition of run uh, when we have a put. So we get to an end run, and then we unfold the definition of new list, and then we choose to um, produce a next and a stream. And now we we need to prove this star judgment, which is here. And uh, again, we unfold the definition of a stream. And um, let's say that the, uh, let's say that we, we are asked for uh, the tail of this stream. So we have to produce a list. And the way that we do it is to unfold the definition of n run and choose to continue with uh, the tail, which is run of x, y. And then we get to some circular, um, like a big circularity, which is again the dagger judgment. Um, so this path is only valid because we know that new run here has a higher priority than new run, sorry, new end run. So um, the two left, the two le the two fixed point left rules that we have on this path, we know that um, mu has higher priority than nu, so we are good. If it wasn't the case, then we needed to find some right rule for nu that has higher priority of, um, 
of other uh, fixed point rules applied on the right. Okay, so this is a, a valid proof. Um, okay, good. So up to here, um, by a couple of examples, I introduced our cal calculus for simultaneous induction, co-induction, and very briefly explained the validity condition that we need to check to ensure we have actual proofs and not just derivations. Uh, we also looked at an example of a program working on mutual listing greatest fixed point just now. Um, so all of our examples prove the property about some particular programs up to now. Um, but we want to use our calculus to prove a more general result. And um, okay, so let's take a step back and talk about the third question we talked about earlier. What is the property corresponding to termination and productivity in a session type program that is defined over interleaved least and greatest fixed points? The answer is a strong progress property. A process satisfies a strong progress if after a finite number of steps, it either becomes empty or attempts to communicate to the left or right. Um, we have already proved that with a suitable local validity condition on processes, um, on, that we introduced on session five processes, we can ensure the property of uh, strong progress. Our proof is based on a curry hubbard correspondence uh, between session types and linear logic. Uh, now, we want to use this calculus to prove um, our theorem directly. And the importance of this proof is that we may be able to use it to prove the same property for more generalized local validity condition. To get a better sense of what a strong progress is, I put two animated examples of session type processes in the slides. And here I focus on the higher level description of them. Um, if you want to see more details and their definition, um, you can take a look at um, the slides and, and also you can find them in our paper. Um, so we have this process producer, the two external channels X and Y. Uh, producer first sends an A stream unfolding message along channel X and then requests for the head from uh, the process that um, offers along channel X. After that, it goes into a new state, which we call it ideal, and it waits for an acknowledgement along channel X. When it receives the acknowledgement, it sends a successor as a natural number uh, along channel Y, and it goes back to the original configuration. So as you see in this um, loop, producer actually uh, communicated with its external channels, X and Y. That is why we say that producer has this strong progress property. And our local validity condition also accepts producer because it receives an unfolding message along its external channel, and the priority of this unfolding message is higher than the priority of the unfolding message that is sent along the same, uh, the same channel. As, an, another, as another example, um, let's look at ping pong, which is an invalid program that doesn't satisfy strong progress property. Ping pong first responds ping and then continues as pong. Pong sends an A stream unfolding message to ping, requests for head. Ping sends an acknowledgement to pong, and then we are back to the original configuration. So they loop forever without ever communicating along channels X and Y. So as an uh, outside of the observer, you will never see a trace of computation. And you cannot differentiate ping pong from a vacuous process. Um, that is why we say that ping pong doesn't have the strong progress property. Um, but the fact is that uh, because of the halting problem, we cannot um, have an effective condition that captures all processes with some compositional strong progress property. So no matter how we 
uh, generalize our condition, there are some processes that are missed out. But we want to generalize it as far as we can. The way that we prove that our local validity condition implies a strong progress is by appealing to the validity condition introduced by Fortier and Santo Canale for their underlying derivations. And of course, the Curry Hubbard correspondence between them. So if you want to generalize this condition, we need a new uh, alternative method for proving a strong progress. And that is why we introduce our first order calculus. In this setting, we can define a strong progress property as a predicate. And we say that a configuration that offers along x has a strong progress if this predicate holds. Using a by simulation, we showed that the configuration type checks. If and only if we have a derivation for this predicate. And this derivation is a valid proof only if our configuration is locally valid. As a summary, we introduce an infinitary sequence calculus for first order intuitionistic multiplicative additive linear logic with fixed points. Uh, and our mo main motivation um, is to reason about program's behavior. In particular, we want to use this calculus to give it direct proof for the strong progress property of locally valid binary session time processes. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please send me an email.